everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint this cute turkey step-by-step, step, totally focused for beginners. Everything about this today is going to be super lighthearted. I'm going to explain every step of the process. You're going to be able to really create this for yourself at home. To help me do that on the mic is my husband, John. <clears throat> hey, guys. He tracks me uh, with a bunch of our cameras. It's kind of like camera stalking in our art studio. On top of that, he watches for your questions. He really tries to make sure that the show is as good for you during the live stream as possible, but also really good for you if you're here on the replay. Because the goal of this is that you can paint this turkey. And I really promise you you can. If you check that description below, really, really open it up. It looks like there's three lines, but really there's 50,000 characters. And in that description is so much ex extra information. There's a link to our website. And on that website is a step-by-step. -step. There is a traceable. Uh, there is all kinds of extra information to help you really succeed at this. Also in the description are a bunch of discount codes. So no matter where you live in the world, you can save a little money on art supplies because really that's where I want you to be able to have all your fun is be able to get all the art supplies you want. Are you guys ready to jump in and do this kind of like little groovy, groovy holiday? Totally, <laughs> totally ready. I'm ready to get into it. Can you tell? Absolutely. I'm sort of in the mood. All right, all let's right. go. All right. We so here you can see our finished result. This is going to be our goal. He's kind of like, Look, I get that he's a fluffy kind of chicky turkey, and that's because I'm an artist, and I like to make changes so they make my heart happy. You do what you want to do. I really would like to suggest that around this green, this is a great area for you to customize. This would look really beautiful in a lot of other colors. So if green is not your favorite, just make it blue, make it black, make it gray, make it any color that you like, as long as it's not the same colors as the feathers because you want them to be able to stand out. Now, on the surface that we're painting, Oh, here is the reference where I'm talking about the step-by-steps. Mm -hmm. These are on the website so that you don't feel stressed out or lost during the lesson. You'll know this is where we are, and it'll be easy for you to keep up even when you're painting live. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, that's free. Don't worry about that. You just go get that. We just, we just offer that to you with love. <clears throat> this is a 9 by 12 artist board by Artist Loft. There's a link to this in the description, but you can get any 9 by 12 you want including paper. I'm always going to tell you what I'm using, but you use whatever you have access to that's within your budget. I have the colors today. I have a mix of different brands of acrylic paint. Now, these are all professional grade paints and they're all part of the brands that I personally really like. We're going to have burnt sienna, titanium white, phthalo green, dioxazine purple, Mars black, cad red light. You could also use any orange paint that you want. Cad red medium, you could use any red paint that you want and CAD yellow medium. You could use any yellow paint that you want. If you're painting with kids, make sure that your colors, if they say cadmium, also have the word hue because you know what that means? There's no cadmium in the paint. <laughs> all student paints, like if you bought the paints very inexpensively in the set, all student paints are hue paint. You never have to think about it. It just means it's a color that's kind of like the color that I'm using. And honestly, for some fun project like that, that's more than good enough. Let me pull this out of the way. So we can start our background. I'm going to be using a couple little extra tools today. I'm going to be using some fluid paint in black and some fluid paint in white. If you don't have these brands, guess what? You could use this brand. It's also fluid paint. Never be stressed out about the little things. I'm so ready for today. I've missed everybody. Mm -hmm. Me too. Oh, I've missed everybody a lot. It's been really great. It has. We, we've back. been super busy the last couple of weeks, though. Oh, my gosh. There's a lot of exciting stuff happening. So much stuff has been happening. Really busy the last couple of weeks. So really enjoyed all that work, but I'm really glad to be here with you today teaching this really goofy, fun little painting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited. Are you? I got two new buttons. Mm. This button, see? Ooh, I, can make, I can make your name Oh, appear. I was like it's waiting here. for the bubbles to come at my face. Oh, I was no, like, I have oh no, it's going to bubble up. I have that too. Where's my pot? It's in your, <laughs> I think it's over by you. It's got a screen on me now so I don't get so bubbled when we bubble. Because we have Texas snowflakes here since we don't actually get snow. I think you so, have it. Oh, I have no, the I button. Have one. You have, we both have one. See, we, I have one. Oh, you have the button. See? All right, so Ooh. John also controls the uh, turbo bubble button. Turbo I just button. went right in my coffee. But okay. So on our surfaces, we like to do a thing with watercolor pencils where we put wishes, intentions, or positive thoughts. Um, I try to get them from the community in our Facebook group. And so we uh, have healing for Mary's son and healing for Allison's nephew. And then help, love, support, and healing for Judy B, 
and her family, they have gone through an unimaginable loss. I have a post like that on my own. I have a post about it on my own personal page on Facebook. Uh, healing for Amy's mom's heart. Healing for legs. My mom's and Lynette's legs included. So everybody sends some nice positive healing to my mom and Lynette. Healing for Robin B. And as per the usual, as of late, I am wishing for a Disney license. Because that would be really cool for me. <laughs> you know, hmm. I realized I have a Disney license and have for several years because when I went to Disneyland, I got my license right there. When I drove all those cars around, they get, uh, has my name on it. It says I'm allowed to drive okay. in the Disney park. That's not the one I mean, darling, but I do like that license and I'll go get another one of those. I have one. I have that license as well. <laughs> it's on that same trip. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to wet my watercolor pencil into the surface. That's just to help the pigment disperse. It is not a necessary step for you unless you have watercolor words too. You are just making a pretty little star. Well, it's it like goes with what I'm going to do. You'll notice that my wishes kind of always go with the color I'll be using in a minute. Are you <clears throat> feathering that color? <laughs> yes, I am, John Cooney. Yes, I am. <laughs> Now, when I do this, what I have here, this brush, this wonderful brush that says the Archer Bonnet is a number eight cat's tongue, okay? And this particular one is a pointed filbert, but you could use a bright, you could use a round. It's really about the directionality of this brush stroke where we're going like this. Can you see how we're doing? Yeah. So we're going to make a fan. We don't have to be too worried down here because what do we have down here? We have Mr. Turkey's fluffy body down here. Mm -hmm. But if you're painting along with me, what I want you to do is take the brush stroke and go back and forth. Make a fan around here. See how we're doing? I do. This is kind of a variation of the hot mess canvases that are really good right now where they paint like a very loose, expressive background and then paint other stuff around it. And I was like, we could do that too Ooh, for our yeah. turkey. So I'm just making sure there's enough paint that it strikes out just because that makes me happy. Now I'm going to get into my brighter orange as you might want to and i'm going to come to that middle space and i'm going to add my little orange in here when i get my yellow in it's going to all brighten up quite a lot notice i'm not doing the whole canvas i've got some white left here don't i yeah that's because you know i need room for yellow you need those feathery tips well because these are going to be our little messy feathers and they're going to be a lot of fun but we definitely definitely uh oh somebody has a whistle <laughs> Teacher conference day, guys. So fair home. warning. Yeah, <laughs> and like, uh, you know, they're they're likely playing with something crazy. I may have noisy. To go, dad. Yeah, you might have to go, dad. That's okay. That's okay. Dadding is fun. No, now you can kind of see we've just grown that out a little bit. I'm gonna rinse my brush out, and I'm gonna dry it off a little bit so there's not too much there. And I'm gonna get really into my yellow. <clears throat> And just kind of bring that in. All right, we want the yellow to kind of come on in there. Because I really want to be able to see when I'm putting my white tips and my feathers on the white tips of those feathers. So, Wendy was like, no, Hi, no, Wendy. Th those are natural turkey sounds in the background. <laughs> my turkeys, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> my two little turkeys. <laughs> they cute turkeys, though. That's true. They're the unexpected turkey. Yeah. They, they show up in the middle of the night <laughs> with wishes of requests for water and bad dream cuddles. <laughs> I would be very disturbed if a wild turkey actually did that, though. Mm. So you can just see we're just enjoying that background. This is a very chill part of your painting. And I want you to take a minute and just be like, you know, at least for this part, all I got to do is kind of swishy swish some paint together and it's all good. You leaned into the sunburst on this one. I did. You just, you were just like. I just, Sometimes, like I've noticed on your set, because she didn't, you know, this is the second time she's painted this one. Yeah. That she's like, I can take it further. I can. And just. Is Look, you just got to do in your painting what works for you. And then yeah. also, um, you know. You're just taking that all the way down around to make it have that radial kind of shape. Yeah, well, we did it. If you look at the step-by-step, -step, we did this in the original. 
Oh, yeah. And it was part of the step. Because that's what's going to give us a really splashy, interesting feather. I want an interesting feather, right? I was not privy to your steps. You, everyone is privy to my steps. They are on the website, and they are free for download. <laughs> <gasps> they are? Yeah. So you could find that information in the description down below? Mm -hmm, and click to it and go there and then be like, that's my step by step. Guess where else it is? Where? Pinterest. He said in his best rhetorical I have voice. been putting these on Pinterest. I'm going to just add some white streaks. Can you see how we're doing here? I do. Just a few places here and there. Just to create some tonality. Woohoo. Just fun to do. You don't want to take out too much of your dark color because you do want your white tips to really show. Yeah. So, you know, just be thoughtful in your starburst. Be playful. You could also do this in any old rainbow colors that you wanted to. <clears throat> Joe says he enjoys working fast in this wet on wet area because you get that cool gradient. It really is enjoyable, and it just reminds you to just chill and enjoy the color, which we don't spend enough time doing, I believe. Stop and enjoy, and enjoy the, the color. color. Stop and enjoy the color. If you need, smell the flowers. Who doesn't need to smell the flowers? I'm just adding more, just going around making the painting interesting for this under part. Whatever makes me happy. And again, you could do this in any radial colors. It's very easy to convert this design into a peacock. Now, while, before you go to dry that, mm -hmm. could you explain, uh, Michelle was asking, how do you keep it from drying out? Are there any skills, that you, things we can do to make wet on wet last longer, just tips, techniques? Yes, you there's a bunch of things. Um, if, you're, if you're in a very dry room, a little humidifier near your palate is very helpful. Uh, if you are in an area where you don't want a humidifier for a variety of reasons, these little water misters can come in and they can mist. Um, another thing that you can do, one of my very favorite products on the planet is acrylic glazing liquid gloss. Oh, wait, it's not here, John. I'm showing you stuff and John isn't here switching. I apologize. I had no idea left. So water misters are really fantastic. You can mist right over your palette. You can use acrylic glazing liquid gloss. Listen, don't buy another brand of this because they may be a totally different product. This is a golden artist color. Um, sometimes you'll see a product labeled as GAC, as they like to shorten their name. And their acrylic glazing liquid gloss is an extender, okay? It improves brushability, it slows drying time, and it allows you to glaze, which usually you buy across several products. But in this particular singular case, this one, which I'm not paid by this company anyway, <laughs> right? I'm just telling you this is the one that I found that doesn't mess me up, does a really good job of that. And there's a link to that in the description below, so never, ever stress out about that. So those are my like immediate easy tips for that. And some people like a wet palette. I don't enjoy that as much, but a lot of people do. And you've got to find things that make your painting time as enjoyable as it can be. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're number one in this situation, aren't you? It's about you and your new practice of being artistic. So it's okay to do a little self-care in this space. I'm going to dry this painting and make you John talk while I dry it. And I will talk to them. Oh! <laughs> I'm gonna okay. So while she's doing that, I'll say, Hey, you guys, thanks for coming and joining us. We really appreciate you coming and seeing us. Um, it's been a little while since we've been live. This is the favorite part of the day for Cinema and I where we get to do live. Uh, don't forget to check in the link sh in the description down below for information like uh, whew, that if you send the Art Sherpa to 33222, you can get a text message notification that we go live. Um, that lets you know precisely the exact moment when I hit that button that says, go live, and we do that. Uh, of course, keep your air mover on the lowest heat setting. You've probably heard me mention that before. It's not great for paint, generally speaking. Um, Sorry, I'm enjoying myself too much. Are you? <laughs> yes, You're apparently. not allowed to do that. Nope. No <laughs> enjoyment of painting for you at all today. You want to know a secret? If you're an abstract artist, you could already be done. Tell me uh, the secret in front of all of these live people that we What's must all, keep. I mean, like all of you two didn't show up. Just a, just a few people showed up. So this is the secret. That if you were doing an abstract, this could already be done. You, you know can call what? this abstract turkey and just be finished with it. And all your friends would be like, oh, that's so insightful. So well, let's <laughs> say we were going to paint in the whole turkey. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to make what I like to call oh. bowling ball. 
Now, I, I want to leave room on both sides for his little body. So I'm going to come make a mark here and a mark down here about two fingers from the side, right? Because we need room for his little other feathers. I'm going to move this out here. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that there's ample room, right? And look how much room I've left for the top of his head. All right? That's, that's more than a hand. It's pretty much down a third of the canvas. So that's where I would want his little head to stop. Because we got to leave room for his little feathers. See? Now I like to make a little circle at the beginning of my bowling ball. And then my little bowling pin. I guess it's a bowling pin. I don't really bowl. I think I've just revealed that. To everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the big Lebowski if that counts. It's true. So you can see it's just sort of a little bowling pin that we have here on the surface. And then you're going to make a little dot up here. And all you're going to do is come from the top of his head and make a feather. It's just a little pointed feather. Look at that. That's not too bad. And then he could have another feather pointed out this way. That's mm -hmm. not too bad. You just make those, bring those out and point those out. And maybe there's one coming here. You can. Point a little feather as you're going. You just want to have little feathers coming out all the way around. Another little feather. I'm using chalk from a chalkboard to sketch this in. So that's how I get that. And if ever you want to erase, like if I want to erase a feather because I didn't like its placement, that's how easy it is. Oh, yeah. Very easy. It's very simple to erase the feathers that you don't like. So all you've got to do is put in the feathers that you do like. All right, I'm going to come around and do the other side. Turkey feathers. Nice. Huh. So all we're doing, just making some little turkey feathers that are going off our surface. Then from the side here, we'll have these little scallops, right? So I'm mm -hmm. going to erase a little bit of my feather, leaving room for scallops. And this is just a damp brush. This is just my cat's tongue damp. All right, yeah. and come around here, and we're going to just do this little scallop. That's that second layer that's purple that we're going to do. All right, well, that's fine. These are things. We've got the turkey kind of coming in here. Do, 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 do. Now, sometimes I will kind of start this in with my brown outlining. I'll kind of outline it a little bit with my brown. And the other thing I might need is I'm going to need a little bit of a beak, which is a downward triangle. And then this is my melting heart. His little waddle here comes around is a melting heart. Oh. Yeah. So that's his little waddle. Let's I put out it. some brown and paint yeah. him in. All right. I'm going to do it with a number four round. I'm only really going to use a couple brushes for the most part on this piece. So it's not a brush heavy design. This is a number four art shirt around. And again, there's tons of information in the description of where you can get these and where you can even get them on sale. Mm. But you can paint in any brush that you want, any brush that you have. So once I have my little chalk in, look what I get to do. You're just going to yeah. kind of sketch him in with brown paint. Yeah, you're just get him framed in a little bit. We need well, the. We essence. kind of outlined him. So, what was nice is it gives me a chance to do this. The essence of turkey. Essence of turkey? That's so very Barbarella of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to say to that. Run, runner! <laughs> <laughs> there is no sanctuary for you here. Oh. It's My family was so sucked into Logan's run. So deep down the dork hole that fell. Well, but this is that time of year when we get together with family. We talk about those things we we're grateful for. And I'm grateful for all my nerddom <laughs> Since in we're my family. Reach back in that way back machine. We may as well go to the Forbidden Planet, get some pop culture reference. Well, that was just mentioning Forbidden Planet. I don't think I can give you any points for pop culture reference there. Other than all of those seem to be ancient, contemporary. I don't know. I think you're going to have to work for it more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is YouTube, darling. You got to be clever, right? I. 
if that was the prerequisite, <laughs> I am not qualified. None of us really are. Uh, mm, I would say I, most of you two, maybe not. <laughs> hold, I, holding a camera, pushing a, your buttons. That you I do, can do push my buttons. Those, I'm super qualified. You know, how, how, like, I think it's like John really loves to be able to tell people, I push my wife's buttons for a living. Well, it's, I didn't, I, I don't actually think I've told people that specifically. Yes, you have. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, it is my job. It is your job. I thought I was a professional heckler. Well, you've got that going too. You can see I'm just outlining all those little chalk lines that I did. And you know what will happen now that I've got that in? I can erase all those chalk lines when the paint is dry with just that clean, damp brush, right? So that makes it easy for me. Guess what I get to do now? Mm. I get to finish my turkey feathers. Turkey. I'm going to take some white paint <laughs> and then come here and just paint in white tips on the little feathers. Yep. Just paint in some white tips on these little feathers. That's fun. We can do that. I'm right here. You see, I'm just on the edge of the brush and I'm just coloring in inside my lines. Now, I line these like twice so guys don't stress yourselves out. And if you find that your white paint isn't covering, you may need to upgrade that one type of white if you think you're going to paint more than just today. If you're just painting today, just do two coats. But if you're going to paint more than today, you may want to upgrade your white. Uh, it's super nice to be live with all our friends here. I really love it. I've missed it. I've been busy. I've gotten a lot of work done. Now, oh, Irene was asking, how long do you want to wait to varnish? Um, Generally wait 24. If you have a very thin paint layer, wait 24, 40 hours, even 72. Believe it or not, there's no, you don't need to varnish early. You could varnish a year from now. It's just about having the surface clean. But remember, varnishing is for very specific things. It's to unify the finish, so the shine and matte of it is unified, to deepen and enrich the colors, and it can protect from UV. But with acrylic paint, it is not as necessary as, say, you might find for an oil painting. Mm. So you're not under the same pressures, if that makes sense. It does. just clean up some of my chalk as I can. So you can see how easily that cleans up. Ah. There we go. It just cleans up very, very easily. And I'm only going to take my feathers to where I feel like I would see those white tips kind of peeking in. Right? So maybe to this one, but I wouldn't necessarily go all the way through. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get that. You can always come through if you need to and do two coats. This should be a rough look. It shouldn't be a neat look. And I'm, if you'll notice, the, the edge of these brush strokes are very jagged. So you don't have to make a nice even edge here. These are feathers and they're kind of wild feathers. Wild feathers. Do you have your wild feathers on? Yeah. You do? <laughs> now we're going to paint in this. I'm going to use green and I chose green because I knew it would look good, even transparent with student paints kind of over that yellow orange, especially the yellow. If you have good paint or you need to change the color, I would recommend painting a little bit of white on the outside of this and then changing it to blue or another bright color that you have. If you're just doing the green with me, just continue on. Hmm. I just really wanted bright colors because I looked at all the turkey paintings out there and I wanted something different. I don't want to be the same, same, same. A new take on an old bird. So I'm taking a little bit of my green and my yellow and my white and I'm going to come here just on the tip of my number eight cat's tongue and I'm going to paint around my feathers. And I will just paint that surface in. Notice that because I'm painting professional paint, I'm getting an easy coverage, aren't I, mm -hmm. of my background. If you're painting student paint, you might find that challenging. And But what I mean by student is like the paint is just one price at the art store doesn't have a bunch of different prices and it's kind of more economical. One of the ways that they save money and help get those prices down is change the pigment or make it uh, less pigment and that can impact your painting result. 
The hack here would be again to paint that area white first before applying bright colors over it. They can't stop you. You'll still find a way. You are an artist. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just know that there's always a way. And sometimes if you're having a frustrating result, it's not you. Sometimes it's the product. Yeah. But this particular combo is really fun. And anywhere it could be peeking in, I'm going to take it down and have it peek out. And we're going to be black lining these feathers with a little brown and black. So you don't even have to feel particularly a lot of pressure here for that either. Ah. And you, that, that brown underlayer makes that line have a little more complexity, doesn't it? It does. It just was a nice way to do it. And sometimes I can add little movements like that in a painting. So even as a beginner, you get some interesting results. That's a, one of the things I've always liked about the way you approach these is that there's, there's a t complexity to the image, even though it's simple. Even though it's simple, we're still, I'm like Mr. Miyagi here. You whack a fence. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to defend Cobra Kai. Take them down. Actually, you no, know, like there's a whole bunch of Cobra Kai fans now. Well, they it's rebooted It's like a whole it. thing that happened where they're like Cobra Kai and they scream Cobra Kai and it's a whole thing. They, they rebooted that uh, franchise on uh, with a YouTube series. Yeah. But I, I mean, I was too much of a purist. I kind of, you know, it was okay. hard. It was hard for me to go back. Oh, no. It's crane technique, undefeatable all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Even Chuck Norris fails before crane technique. That's true. That's not true. Don't send Chuck after me. I'm still afraid of him. He's still in really good shape. Have y'all seen him recently? I'm going to have to do like, the, there's just not an amount it's, of sit-ups for him or Christy Brinkley. They have just really stayed in shape. It's really his beard you have to be afraid of. Apparently his beard that, is very powerful. It's like the, indestructible. The beard of Chuck Norris. Bob and his hair, the source of power. So rinse that brush out really well. Can I show you something, guys, that helps me? I have this one water where I take my strong pigment and I get it out. And then I have this other second water where I give a second rinse to. And that helps my brush not get muddy. This is something you might not know about if you didn't know. Hmm. I'm going to take a little of my black now, as you do. And I'm just going to very carefully outline these little feathers now if you're having trouble with your brush you might want to switch to a round this just works because uh the cat's tongues have points so you can do this type of work it's okay if a little of the brown shows through right i don't yeah. go past the scallops because those are about to be painted in and I want to keep those on my happy little turkey. Who is absolutely in no way on the dinner table. Huh. He's a pardoned turkey. John would pardon all the turkeys. Hmm. So the last year we actually had a turkey. John had me get a heritage turkey. You know what heritage turkey means? It means it's a happy, friendly turkey. No, it means turkey it's a free. really fit turkey first of all watch <laughs> some video of heritage turkeys they're like little streaks the cameras can't even pick them up <laughs> they're wiry uh very fit little birds so i learned some sad things about myself that day and that i really like me an unfit turkey to eat i need the butter ball but you really like the heritage turkey i thought it was interesting I, you know, I like more natural birds. Like, I like duck when it's natural. Mm-hmm. He does. So I'm doing that double wash here, and that's a great way of doing it. Now I'm going to bring out my doxazine purple. I'm going to put it up here by my white because I'm going to use a little white into it. Just so you can see the purple because doxazine sometimes can um, seem real dark, almost like a black, but when you add a little white to it, you can really see the purple pull up. See that? And I'm just painting all those little feathers. This is a number four round. Paint those all in purple. Mm. Not too challenging. 
all of them now. All the scallops are purple. All the scallops purple. I don't know. I can't. I was going to do a thing there, but I can't do a thing. <laughs> <sighs> Take a deep breath. Breathe out. Remember, you probably started painting to have fun. So if you're getting stressed with yourself or frustrated with yourself, you got to relax. Mm -hmm. This is just art. You're just painting. I'm just kind of doing little swirly streaks so that there's a bit of a swirl to the to the scallop. And remember, if you didn't want to draw it, there's a traceable, there's all that stuff. All those things are available to you for a reason. While we're painting in so many purple scallops, do we have any questions, Mr. Cooney? Oh, let's just see here. I'll go back up because I was just... It was just, I heard you just having fun, so I didn't want to distract you, but I was like, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's a music show because I saw something I missed. Uh, do you have a, uh, on stretch canvas, is triple primed the same as triple gessoed? Unless it specifically states otherwise, yes. Mm. Now, there could be a time that maybe they would use a different priming media than gesso mm -hmm. you know um and that can rarely in some cases happen mm -hmm. but in general yes but that means and you could do this to your own you could buy an artist loft and then just gesso it three times and your artist loft would also be triple brand <laughs> right so just know that you know that's just them doing some work for you and prepping the canvas mm -hmm. in such a way that you're not having to uh wait to begin your project um but keep in mind acrylic just paints on everything now, so priming is just about your brush ability. That just means how nicely your brush runs over the surface. Another interesting question came up. I, is, you, we could, I love it. Let's do it. So this is not really. Ooh. What's up? Cat. But cat? the dog startled me and I almost went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but dog it's her bark, cat, cat bark. Okay. So this really isn't um, your style of art per se. No. But. What style of art would you call this? I would say that this is very, um, I would use words like outsider art, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is folk art. Folk art, yeah. You could call this folk art. You could call this outsider art. Um, it's, it, it's got a, it doesn't really have that much pop to it. I could maybe say there was a few pop influences, I guess, because it's a turkey and it's Thanksgiving. But this is really. But know that those terms don't in any way insult the art. Grandma Moses no. was an outside artist, so. No, no. And she's and... in all the museums. It's just a way of saying whether somebody's coming from a traditionally trained classical art school or whether they are self trained and painting in more kind of non traditional methodologies. And keep in mind, guys, we're here teaching you guys how to make art, not necessarily a specific kind of art. We hope that you take these skills and techniques on to explore lots of different ideas and areas. So that's why the channel has so much variety on it is I'm always trying to introduce you guys to a plethora of things. And don't you want to know about a plethora of things? I do. Yeah, that's what I figured. Huh. Well, that <laughs> so, was that was totally weird. What? Uh, someone it, we just had a moderator like somehow thank you moderator cat red i'm not exactly sure what happened out there but i'm gonna have to look into that there's some little little message popped up there that said thank you they just did okay well thank you moderator i appreciate that too so i'm going to come here and what was the message it said thank you for all you do sherpa and john oh wow thank you and thank our moderators for all they do putting up with my crazy i'm taking my number four round and i'm just outlining all these little purple scallops now that's pretty doable isn't it mm -hmm. that's why i like this is this is just about you know doing the outlines having the fun not being too stressed yeah just having a chill time now, one of the things that you'll notice is that I'm on the tip of my brush and I'll dip in water and I'll bring back and I'll kind of thin my black paint 
And that is another way to get my paint to thin up so it can be like fluid paint if I don't want to go out and buy a whole other type of paint for different texture. All around, sort of loose and happy. Rinsing it out twice, like you do now. I could, and it would be reasonable to do at this stage, dry this and then put the white swirls. But I think for the, just the practicality of our lesson, I'm going to paint in my turkey brown first mm. and let the paint dry naturally on its own. Either would be completely acceptable. And I'm just going to get my brown paint. And it's going to get a little of my black into it. So it's almost like a chocolate color. See how we've got a little deep chocolate? Deep chocolate. It's uh, like a Taizande there. <laughs> like, <laughs> like so much. <laughs> He's pretty cool. He's oh. pretty cool. We're just going to paint all that in, except for the waddle, except for the beak with that dark brown. And you will see that even with my paint, there's still a little bit of the underpainting that shines through, but that's okay because it's in a nice harmony with what's on top of it. And since he's going to be a fluffy turkey, there's so much forgiveness here for this. So see how the color is like uh, dark chocolate? I do. Chocolate rain? Yeah. <laughs> this is going along here. We've met him like twice now. Mm -hmm. No, he's pretty cool. I enjoy him quite a bit. His Virgie voice, super cool. He speaks with authority whether he means to or not. Uh huh. Like his Taco Bell order comes across so much more authoritative than mine does. <laughs> Sometimes we're just gifted. It's true. That isn't too bad, is it? Yeah. Just painting that all in. And I'm just going around my dripping heart waddle. So that's that first brown layer, and that's going to help me build what's next. I'm doing the double wash like we talked about. I'll put out a little of my yellow. And it can be nice to do the beak yellow. Listen, if you guys are painting Artist Loft or Basic. Now, I'm having Artist Loft. See this number three? Mm -hmm. That's their professional line. You can get that in store now. Um, if you're painting the one that says one or is there a cheaper version, it's going to have a little less coverage. So you'll need to paint your beak white first. I'll just even, you know, I'll even show you. You would want to come in here and just paint this all white just a little bit first. So when you put the yellow on, it was bright. We'll let that dry. That's what I mean by painting it white first. Because professional pigment is super loaded. They put so much color in the paint that it really covers. But sometimes, you know, with less expensive paints, it won't cover as well. That looks nice. Mm-hmm. Guess what we get to do now? We're going to put out the white paint. This is my fluid white. You could use a craft version, right? You could use, like, Craftsmart. You could use Deco Art. You could use any of these. You could use, if you just happen to have some whole bind laying around, you use just whatever it is that's fluid or soft body, that's what you're looking for. You want it mm. to flow off the paint a little easier. Now I'm going to get a little bit of this on the tip of my number four round, and I'm going to just make little curly cues. Are now, those fun? Yeah. Could you preserve the underpainting and just do a, a few dark feathers? You could. But John really brought up a good point. The idea of these here, I'm just on the tip and then I just swirl around. The idea of these lessons is that you learn the techniques and then as you go, you get to be more creative and do things that you're feeling more and more through each lesson. So eventually you grow up and you don't need me anymore like Mary Poppins. Which is always sad to see you guys go, but I'm so proud to see you guys start, you know, when you're like, I'm on my 200th painting and I'm doing my own stuff. Always exciting. Mm -hmm. 
So there we go. We got that all in. So those are the swirlies. Look how easily this is going in. This is really going in fast. It just goes in fun. It just goes in fast. Now, I mentioned about the yellow having the white underneath it. So now I can put that in very, very easily. And you can see it just makes a little bit of a difference. No trouble. Now, the feathers are a fun deal. Um, I'm going to put out a little more brown. Where is my burnt sienna? I put it down and I don't see where. There it is, right in front of me. <laughs> well, I'm going to maybe put it by my orange a little bit because sometimes it's nice to get a little orange into the feathers. Yes, I put feathers on my turkey's head. I just, he's fluffy. He's young. He's a chicken. He hasn't molted. I don't know. It's just cuter now. <laughs> so there's a lot of love coming in today. You've... You've got a lot of super fans here. I know Kim and Rita super wanted to just wave and say hello. And, hi, Kim. Know, hi, Rita. Let's sip our said, I'll say, yeah. Denise said, hey, John and Cinnamon. She really loves all the techniques that you show us. It's very helpful on her art journey. I'm and, so glad. And let's see here. Uh, uh, the Pearl said, thank you, John and Cinnamon, for being light keepers and help us spread the, uh, the joy of art. So thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so guys much so that. much for the love. I read the comments after the videos go. Oh, yeah. I go in groups. All of your kind words, they mean a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I get to everyone. I'm, I'm always like in different workplaces reading comments. You just never know where I'm going to be. It could be Twitter. It could be Instagram. But I go there when I'm just sitting down and relaxing. And I love to hear what your experiences are and to see your artwork. It is really my great pleasure and honor. Notice that I have mixed a little of my burnt sienna and a little bit of that kind of like orange color and it's all like on the tip of my brush mm -hmm. i'm going to come here and just make these little pulled in brush strokes so I go press and pull and i'm going to layer right over into my little feathers here aren't those fun mm-hmm I like, this is a very simple feather technique. It's a very simple feather technique. If you like this, I've got a mother and baby bird also based <laughs> in this. <laughs> it's fun. It's easy. It's friendly. Maybe make a couple taller there. So he's the rare feathered turkey. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I told Todd as I was doing this, this is happening because I feel this and he needs to be fluffy or I just can't be okay. That's what I told John. Mm -hmm. Now, when I come around the bottom, you're going to notice that I turn the surface. And that's because we're going to be layering these kind of in the same way that you layer bricks, right? So I'm going to come here across the bottom, making these little inward strokes. You know, you can grab more orange, more brown. You're just bringing those in. And then as I go, I just continue. And you can kind of see those little strokes as they appear. As we go through, you can add all kinds of, like I just grabbed some yellow. But you'll see how even though they're layering over each other, that texture starts to come up. And it's okay to allow bits of the dark color to show through. The reason I don't do the dark feathers all the way through at first is I like to see where these feathers lay out and then from that overall vantage point, mm -hmm. lay in some of those dark focal feathers. His camouflage, not camouflage, that he would have, if that makes sense, putting out a little more. So it's a fun methodology to get in some feathers. It works on lots of birds. Uh, the pumpkin, the chickadee and pumpkin does this. Mm -hmm. We use a very similar thing in the chickadee and pumpkin. Maybe a little more realistic than this, right? But still the same basic concepts to accomplish the goal. <sighs> it's going to be quite a holiday. I can't wait. I do like, I do like the cooking. I'm very into making the cranberry sauce from scratch my whole thing so I can turn this around and I'll just keep as you can see 
Only his little feather's arm. In. And that's where that little kind of layering comes from. Now I am careful around the waddle. <laughs> Be careful around your waddle. <laughs> If I have to get close to something, I just make a smaller brush stroke, see? And then I'm gonna radiate that out. All the way right up to there. And then I will carefully come around all that wall here. Now, it's okay to get a little of your black into the, into the mix and make some dark feathers. And I'll come back and accent, see? Mm -hmm. A few of them here and there. Not everywhere. Just little places where dark feathers could be peeking out. And you can see that even adds that layer of feathering. Oh, yeah. So you could be a very new painter and get a really cool result. Be a really new painter and have a lot of fun with your painting. Any more brown? You can get some more brown. And I like to bring a few of them around here. Not too much because his eyes are going to be in the center and I like them to focus. But I'll definitely put some little feathers around there. That's looking good. Rinsing out. And let's thin some paint, see if this will work, if it's still able to thin. Because like, as you mentioned earlier, acrylic paint kind of dries as you use it. So I'm checking that just to make sure it's okay. And I'll go ahead and go around, just on the tip of the brush, my beak. That is not, see that's what happens when you thin these. You gotta make sure that the thinning with the water for the flow still leaves enough pigment that you can make strong, clear lines. There we go. So now we got the waddle and the beak outlined. And we're gonna put in a couple of the eyes. So let's get some nice paint into here. We want it to be nicely pigmented. If you're having trouble, switch to the fluid paint. But what I like to do is I like to have kind of this circle of an eye. It's a very long skinny circle. And this circle of an eye. There we go, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of personality there. Oh yeah. Okay. Now, for the next part, definitely dry so that your white paint goes over everything and doesn't pick up the color that's underneath. Yeah. And that's, yeah, just really, what's that? Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, just make sure that when you're, um, you're drying that off because you don't want it to pick up and drag the paint uh, as you're doing the next layer. So just make sure that's nice and thoroughly dry. It'll just make everything easier. So when you put the little white line on that we're about to put in, all that kind of detail. It'll make it easier. You made it more purple this time than Did blue. I? It was more purple than blue. Oh, I think the same color. It just probably processes more blue. Mm. There's no blue in it. It is all just purple. Just I just know. purple. Oh, you know what? I bet you I know what that is. What is that? I bet you the machine is trying to do some sort of oh. color correction. Let me check it. Yeah, he's like very bright. Could be me too. Maybe oh, I sent him over. Check that out. <laughs> okay. That makes a little more sense. There you go. Picture in picture. It's a very, a very subjective thing. <laughs> but you could bubble me while I outline. So we're finishing could... up. And to celebrate finishing Here? up, John is going to drop some of the Texas snowflakes on us. So uh, a little bit of that holiday Texas magic gets to us. While that's happening, I'm going to take white and I'm going to outline my eyes. I move my, well, yeah, it's okay. The glycerin won't, won't hurt me. A little bit <laughs> of my stomach will be fine. Just keep paint out of your body. So I'm going to get that outlined in white. And I'm going to put a dot here and a second dot right there for reflection. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. Little reflections. And then maybe a little beak reflection. 
kind of coming down a little bit of the beak. And I also like to add a few little reflections on his waddle. There he is. Now, when he's all done, you're going to take a little brush. Let me see if I have my signature brush out. I have my favorite, favorite signature brush. You're not going to white line his little body and his waddle? Huh? You're not going to white line his body? Oh, that's right. White lining. You're right. Thank you. Catching that. I was just talking to them about that. that. Thank so I was you. Like, I, I would was have like, been so irked afterwards. Yes, let's white line. Okay. This so, is what husband heckling is for. This is exactly for. what husband heckling is for. Do, 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 do. See, and you're going to still come in under an hour because it's only 15. You've been 15 minutes to make him. So you have a whole 10 minutes to, to line him. And put highlights on him and sign him and still talk to people for another <laughs> eight minutes. <laughs> there is no reason that we have to be done in an hour. We just like to be on the shorter oh, ones. Just and that's because sometimes we know you're painting with little brushes and their their energy and their time space for a lesson is maybe not as long. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is, though. Sometimes those kids hang in. So I'm just sort of modeling right over the top, just a little loose little line. I don't even worry about, like, I'm not trying to trace. I'm just enjoying that. You could even come in and, you know, add a few of these in here if you wanted. Sometimes well, a few little descriptive lines are always entertaining. I know those aren't there in the lesson, but it's fun to sometimes show you guys the options that you might have in a design to have a good time. So when Little Brush Charlie paints this and puts it up on his wall, yes. I want to see the entire wall. Yes, Little Brush Charlie, we do. And I if you get your wall. mom's permission, you can share it in a couple places. If you go to the website, there's a place to comment and leave pictures. And also we have a Facebook group mm. that uh, your mom's allowed to come in. You know, you've got to show her how to be like a good internet citizen and come in and uh, share your artwork in our group. That would be awesome. Yes. But you got to share those good internet citizen uh, <laughs> things with parents. We need it. <laughs> so you're just signing with a little little. Detail I brush. took a little detail brush. This is a number one Art Sherpa detail, and I'm going to just give this a signature right here. There we go. Put your Sherpa forward. There we go. Sherpa signature on there. It's on the feathers. So everyone that. knows that this is mine because yours might look exactly like mine. But let me tell you something important, and I'm going to go to the front to say it. Okay. Boom. Don't show my ear, weirdo. But your ear is so <laughs> cute. You have the cutest ear. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the big deal. We're painting along together, and if you follow along with each of the brush strokes and each of the techniques, you and I are both going to have a happy holiday turkey. But know that the goal of this process isn't that yours looks exactly like mine. That is never the goal. The goal is, is that you get to enjoy your creative journey, and I get to enjoy my creative journey. At the end, we have some turkeys that are somewhat similar in appearance at the end of it. We all have different brush strokes and we all have a different way of applying the paint. Mm -hmm. so it's completely normal and natural that yours looks a little bit different than mine or maybe you got really creative and it looks a lot different. This is art and that is what makes art amazing. I want you to be good to yourself, especially over this next holiday season. Be good to each other, kind in lines, let people merge, let's make it a little bit better in the world and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bubble me out, baby. Oh. Bye bye. bye, -bye. You're not going to get here in time. There they are. See the bubbles. Bubbles. Bye -bye. bubbles. Bubbles. Bubbles.